Welcome to the Hog Radio Show, a weekly radio show covering the world of motorcycling and rider lifestyle. Featuring Walt, the Rev Fletcher, and Steve, the producer, Johan. Now here they are with the good news on riding, your host. Welcome everyone to another hour of the best in ride entertainment. We've got another great show lined up for you. Make sure to check us out at www.thehogradioshow.com where you can listen to all our past shows and sign up for our free monthly newsletter and follow the latest news and views and stuff covering the world of motorcycling. And so we're going to go right into our first guest, and then we've got a real interesting discussion coming up after that, but at any rate. <laughs> yes, we do. So our first guest is Steve Marquis. Demar- is it DeMarchi DeMarchi. or DeMarchi? How do you sell- say that, Steve? Yeah, it's DeMarchi, yep. Yeah. Steve DeMarchi, lead guitarist of Steve. the band Alias, who will be kicking off their world tour this August at the Sturgis Canada Music Event. So how's it going, Steve? That's awesome, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Pretty good. Now, um, where now can you... you actually get into the United States? Sure. Why that's, not? <laughs> that, well, that's one of the things that the guy that we call, he kept saying, you know, we, we want to have Sturgis Canada because there's a lot of the Canadian bands can't get into the United States. No, he I'm said going, a lot of the Canadian bike clubs can't get into oh, the I United see. States. I see. Okay. Alias is a band. And, oh, okay. And, and this is a lead guitarist. So, uh, yeah, he did. He said that. Um, so anyway, Steve, where are you hailing from right now? From Toronto. We're uh, rehearsing in Toronto right now. Now, do you have the whole team up there, or just you and your uh, your vocalist, or is uh, the rest no, of the crew got, up there? Uh, no, we've got uh, Freddie isn't in town yet. He's still in Los Angeles. I'm just kind of rehearsing with the uh, with the other members, like the you know drummer, bass player, and guitar player. So, tell us real quickly who the drummer, bass player, and and uh, guitarist and all that stuff, along with yourself, um, is. Kind of tell everybody a little well, bit about yourself, please. Sure, no problem. I'll start with the guys in the band. Well, Wolf Hassel's playing bass. He used to uh, be in Sheriff with me back in the day, many moons ago. Um, he used to also play for Frozen Ghosts, so we got him on bass. And we've got, um, uh, let's see, uh, Ross Stewart uh, playing guitar. He's, uh, he's played on a couple of uh, Alias uh, records and stuff back in the day. And then we've got to Chris Sutherland playing for, um, he, he's the drummer for Kim Mitchell. Uh, Sass Jordan, he's played with a lot of bands. He's oh, yeah. He's a drummer. So, um, yeah. Excellent. Great. Excellent. Well, you never know who's going to be in there, and I know you guys are, um, I had some other people's names, but we won't say anything. And um, so, you know, for those folks. Yeah, well, also, well, also I got my brother Dennis. He's, he's playing keyboards, and he, he was the original keyboard player for Alias, and he toured with the Cranberries uh, for many years. I also played with the Cranberries for many years, so. You know, we're, we're musicians that kind of we adapt to whatever we need to do, you know? <laughs> so. Well, and, and for those who don't realize, um, a lot of bands from the yesteryear, um, yeah. when you reform, <clears throat> not everybody who was in the original, original setup can make it, or the secondary setup. Um, me having been in some bands of my own here locally yeah. in the Seattle area, never went anywhere other than our basement and a few demo tapes. And uh, But the, the, the fact is, I remember going through numerous people before we finally settled into what we would consider our final group and, and conglomerate and, and worked and wrote and demoed and played out and then it implodes and then you move to the next <laughs> band and you do the same thing. And I did yeah. that more than I'd like to admit. But yeah. um, Steve, uh, you're a, a phenomenal guitarist. Guitarist. You had a lot of success with uh, starting out with Sheriff, and then you moved right on into Alias. And and and, and you know it's funny because the music you're playing, um, folks, just go to YouTube and look up Alias and just start listening yeah. to the music. Great stuff, great hook laden, um, ballad laden, um, yeah. rock stuff. Straight ahead. We were doing, I mean, so close to that style in the late '80s with my one band, and. It was funny because my vocalist, uh, you know, he went on, the drummer moved on, and then that's when grunge hit. And that was the end, the death knell of anything that was melodic prior. And you, you, you felt that, didn't you? Oh, definitely, yeah. That was, that was a tough time because, I mean, you know, thanks for what you were saying and stuff. I mean, we, we really did well back in, back in those days. We had a lot of success in the States and um, lots of places around the world. And we were working on the next album, and we had finished the second album. And just as we had finished it, uh, grunge hit, 
And the record business just like totally changed. The whole like it just changed almost like within two or three, two or three months it was over. The record company comes up to us saying, you know, the style of music that you're playing is history. Yeah. And here we are with a finished record that we just spent a ton of money on, <laughs> and uh, we couldn't get it released. You know, and that happened to everybody. I mean, some people say, well, you know, that's just an excuse. Look at uh, you know bands like Bon Jovi or something like that. But they were in a much uh, Let's just say they were wealthier than we were, so yeah. they were able to kind of sustain, and you know they moved on over to Europe, and it was a different market over there, and we were just kind of left like, okay, you know, what, what do we do now? And uh, it was, a, yeah, it was, it was a really tough thing going from having a number one song, uh, you know, like three or four top ten singles, to you know the year after, like it's over, and it's not because we didn't want to continue; it's just, it's just the way it went, you know. And 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 I, I, I suspect your fan base didn't want it to go over either. It's just that the, the powers to be in the industry yep. said we've, we've cleaned the slate. Um, I know a number of artists that they all fell into that same category. I mean, they, they literally, like you said, within three months, they were out of a job. And, they, and we're talking top nam- names. And, and, and if it wasn't for a lot of the, the individuals who were able to uh, regenerate themselves through the, the, the state fair circuit, Hello. and now, of course, the casino circuit, which I'm hoping you guys are going to be able to hit because that's a second life for everybody like yourself to get out okay, there, right make good money, play for 70 minutes, and, and without having the expense of uh, a big touring rig. Are you guys, talk to us a little bit about where you're going to go after you do Sturges. Well, we're, we're thinking the, that we want to do that. We want to see how Sturgis goes. I mean, we haven't been together now uh, in, well, probably since the last time we played as a full band. Would have been back in maybe 92 or 93. Oh, yeah. Uh, Freddie and I have done a lot of different, like, acoustic things where we just go in and do acoustic versions. We've done, you know, a lot, a lot of those kind of things. But we haven't done, like, a full, you know, a full thing with drums and amps and the whole thing. So we're going we're gonna to see how this goes and, you know, if the crowd likes it and, and everything works out, we'd love to continue. I'd love to get into the casino thing. I've had so many people call me saying, you know, with, with the amount of hits you guys had, how come you guys aren't touring? And I'd say, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Because, <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been kind of sitting at home since, uh, well, probably, I guess, I guess when I stopped touring, I stopped around 2008. I ended up doing a, a Dolores O'Riordan solo record. Uh, she was a singer of the Cranberries, uh-huh. and she wanted to do a solo record. She called me up, and I helped her out with that. And we toured the world, and that was great. It was a good tour. And then after that, I just kind of, kind of semi-retired. Not really because I wanted to, but just, just kind of how things go sometimes, you know. So hopefully this time here, with this uh, with this great gig at Sturgis, uh, hopefully it can kind of launch something for us, and we can continue. Well, be awesome. I. I, I'm hoping so too. I mean, they've got everybody from Burton Cummings to the Stampeders, and I mean, it, hey, speaking of someone that was in your domain, uh, your era, uh, they got the Killer Dwarfs coming up there. So, I mean, if they're willing to come up and play, and and you guys are coming out, I think you're going to find that there's a lot of people that are very receptive um, uh, of to what you're doing. You had some, like I said, you had beautiful power ballads. Um, I mean, you know, Motley Crue's hanging it up, and and his vocals can't take it anymore. I can tell you that much but they're doing the big Sturges blowout down here in South, South Dakota and a lot of the other bands but you know you guys got some beautiful stuff and I'm hoping that you really do well that you're well uh, received and and then if everything goes well then you guys can hook up with a booking agent and uh, go out and make a living again as, a, as a, a gifted musician that you are. Oh, thanks so much. I really appreciate that because, I mean, you know, uh, we, we, everybody, not just us, I mean, a, a lot of musicians, you know yourself, you put a lot of hard work into something, and then when it, it, when it something doesn't happen for other reasons that you have no control of, you don't know what to do, you know, you're just kind of, you're just kind of mesmerized. <laughs> it's like, where do you go from here, you know? And, like, when I jumped on with the Cranberries, uh, I mean, there was a band that sold, like, 40 million records, you know, alternative band out of uh, out of Ireland, and start touring with them, and you know we're doing these massive uh, massive venues, and I just kind of be sitting there shaking my head, going, "Well, you know, we've had number one songs, and this band's, you know, I mean, they've sold a lot of records, but they've never been on top of the charts like we have, but yet they're getting all these ticket sales, and it's just kind of a bizarre way to think. You just kind of stand there, going, scratching your head, going, "I don't understand this," but but uh, not to complain about that. I had a, had a great time with the Cranberries. It was awesome, awesome tour. And we're just kind of hoping that, uh, you know, we can get Alias back out there and, and do some of the casinos and do some, of, like you say, some of the state fairs and stuff. 
and, uh, you know, start meeting the people that, you know, backed us back in the day, you know. Um, you know, you got to remember, there's still a huge crowd out there that, I'm not the only old guy out there. No, you <laughs> are. There's still a lot of people, still a lot of people that like that style of music, and, uh, well, I you know, think we like playing it, and hopefully they'll come out and see us. Well, and I think I think there's a lot more of a return to that. I I, I just uh, even some of the heavy metal bands are really moved into the more melodic uh, arena that my kids are into, and in the younger generation, and and there's. I think there's, uh, I mean, if, I mean, you're not going into the country thing necessarily. I mean, that's what Bon Jovi did. They moved into the country and um, that that power. And really, today's country is basically the '70s rock and roll. And yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you could fit really well within that. And uh, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing all uh, how things went. Um, I'm not going to be there this year because I got to be in Oregon during that week. But um, my uh, my thinking is this, that uh, there's there's tens of thousands of people that have been liking you and listening to you on YouTube because they make comments. I, I went through a lot of your songs. There's a lot of people there. And so I wish you all the best. We're ending our time with you, and uh, maybe we'll catch up on the other side. That would be awesome, Ted. Uh, make sure you come up and see us sometime. We've got to hook up, definitely. Thank you, Steve. You have a great night. Hey, thanks for the time. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.